that you will see the likes of Sir David Evident and also as the MP of Bessley and Crawford. Crawford. So it's it's a big occasion to be honest. So yeah, please plan attend plan to attend. The workshop is very very important if you are going to be doing the internship. I would be sending the invitation for for the workshop and also for the inauguration today so that I'll need to finally confirm the people that are going to come. I know a lot of people have confirmed that they are coming, so it's been a long time. So this is time I want everyone to reconfirm if they are still going to come or not. So like I said, the for if you are in the UK, anywhere in the you are in the UK and you want to attend the you want to register for the internship, the workshop is very, very important. Yeah, someone is asking what's the workshop for. Okay, I will quickly mention this. Uh maybe the person might have joined very late. Uh, okay. I think, yeah, please do go and watch all the videos. I would say everyone should go and watch all the videos that I've, we've done for the last few sessions. So I would, one minute, let me. So the, yeah. The question, the answer to the question about the workshop, yeah. This particular training is online. So however, we do workshop for people, one, for people that are struggling because there are some issues we set up, there are issues that, yeah, I've not been able to set up my environment i've got issues with how everything works so we actually do like a one day uh, workshop for c sharp and also for the automation to actually answer any question that anyone can have during the course of the training we do one workshop at the beginning and we do one workshop at the end at the beginning of the training Yeah, the video is not yet on, so I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm not actually put the video on right now. So just a quick um, intro. Okay, one minute. Let me just put something on. Just one minute. Okay. That's about the workshop. So, any other question before I start? So uh, maybe we we'll answer all the question. If you have any question right now, I think you please ask. Okay, there's no question. So if there's any question, let me know. So before we start this meeting, so one minute, I just need to log in clear. How often, yeah. We do we do this training. Uh, there are a lot of trainings that we do for free. So this is one of the trainings that we do offer. So which is the C sharp automation using C sharp. So and this one um, would happen like twice in a year. So we also do C um, automation for Java. So that could also happen twice in a year. 
So we just finished one for uh, last quarter. So the next one is going to come in the next uh, um, next six month. So we also do, yeah, I think, let me bring up the one minute. So we also do other trainings for like Excel training. We do training for other, for project management. We do training for, uh, what else? I will bring up the sheet right now. So one minute. So yeah, it's not the only training, but for this right now, um, it's going to the next one might happen in the next nine months. So the, if that answers the question. Sorry, hello, Mr. Deggy. Are we, the video is not showing now. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to, it's uh, because, yeah. Um, I don't know what you mean by you saying that the workshop will be cancelled. Yeah, please, yeah. So the workshop is happening on the 19th January. We're going to have two workshops. The first workshop, which is kind of an intro into what we are going to do and also to help people get them on the feet and also as a prayer for the internship is going to happen on the 19th of January. Then towards the end of the program, towards the end of the training, we're going to do another basically that goes going through everything that we've taught and also to answer any questions along the line and to I also, we use the same workshop like for CV and also for the other prep that are available. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, all right, so I will just share my screen. Today lesson is going to be interesting one because I decided to change the plan. So I'm going to see if we could incorporate Git into this training so that we get it as soon as possible because that's another skill that is very, very important. Okay, all right, let's start. So can everyone see my screen now? So Okay, cool. All right. Okay, as I have said before, I think so this is the list of training that we do. 
So we do introduction to IT for new, for fresher, for I think I've got some comment that I'm very new to IT, so we do that. And this we don't do online right now, we do it physically. So we will advise people when that is going to happen. So we also do um, Microsoft Excel. We finished one maybe four or five months ago. So another one I'm actually discussing with teacher and it was really, 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 really helpful. I thought I knew Excel about Saturday in class. I, I was actually tutored to be honest. And as a tester, Excel is something that you should, you should know very well. So, and we also started an introduction to software testing and we've done Java, we've done Java replacement. So, and this is the one that you are currently doing right now, which is software testing with C Sharp and also with placements. We're going to cover BDD with Specflow and we did cover BDD with Cucumber using our Java. So, and there's other training that we do offer, which is Oracle HSM Enterprise. So we're going to look into that. We also do database management and we're going to, during this training, we might also focus this on part of database administration and how to use SQL in this particular training. So please stay tuned. Then basic accounting, mentoring, and coaching. So the workshop that we are talking about that's going to happen at the end of this course, some of it also is going to involve mentoring and coaching and the internship also involve mentoring and coaching because you're going to have one-to-one -one body, we're going to have people that you've been assigned to and you're going to work in a team. So it's basically like mentoring and coaching and also towards you being able to break into the IT discipline. We do workshop for CVs and interviews, case and also, yeah, and also project management. So that's just uh, that in a nutshell what we plan to do. As it also, um, all these courses are free of charge, basically. So, well, even though free of charge, we advise people to take it very, very serious. It's very, very intense. So I can overemphasize that. So, as I'll just go through this. I think we, because some people joined us, so I'll just do a quick intro on this. So, yeah, we are non-profit educational institutions, and we are based in Crayford. It's a branch, uh, we are a branch of our CCG, uh, we are City of God. We are in Crayford, and this school was founded as a, uh, Aim with an, an objective to educate and empower people in our community. Uh, we've actually spread it out to a lot of people. I've got testimony of people that have graduated through the course and they actually get jobs. So we got lots of testimonies from people. So, and we, all our tutors are professionals. They are not paid. They, are, they offer their service free of charge. So I'm going to go through a few. That is myself. My name is DJ. I work. I work in different industries. So, and um, if you want to know about me, I think that's my LinkedIn profile. So you can actually check me up from there. So, and also Patricia Ogunaja. So also in the QA, and as actually work in different organization too, so that's a profile. So if you want to look into that. And we also have Temi uh, Shudende also. You can also, also currently working for Capgemini, you can look into a profile on LinkedIn. So, and we do have other volunteers that I want to mention. We have a lot of admin, uh, assistants, so, and we try to train the trainers, so that's it. So if you are also interested in joining us as volunteers, we you are very, very welcome. And I know someone has contacted me to say, oh, I want to actually be able to contribute, and I'm a performance tester. If you are still in the call, please do get back to me again. So we have different people with different skill sets. So 
And if you do have any skill set that you want to also contribute into the uh, school, please do free to contact me. And as you can see, everyone does contribute and we try to help people. So please, let's make it worthwhile. So yeah, introduction to the training, as I said, it's going to be weekly online training. So someone asks about that. So it's eight to 10 every Thursday. We've done extra courses for manual testing. So if you miss that course, I uh, would say um, look into my YouTube channel. Uh, you'll be able to see the video for that particular course. At, for people that are able to enter the internship, we enforce, actually, we encourage them to do the certification. We, I think, last time, maybe a lot of people actually did it and they passed. I didn't see anyone actually fail the, the certification. So the internship is very, very important. The certification is also very important for you to get a job. So because the internship is towards you getting a job, we advise everyone that and the internship to be able to do certification. So even though the course is free, you need to allocate I think that costs like around 200 pounds or 150 pounds for you to be able to do that. And that certification needs to be done within one month of entering the internship. It's something that you can actually read within one week. So, okay. And I will also mention the internship. You need to commit at least two to three hours daily to the internship. Otherwise, you are not going to be accepted or the internship is very, very intense. So, uh, like I say, it's free, but time, every one's time is very, very important. At the end of the class, I will send the YouTube channel to everyone so, so that you can actually have it. So, and in one minute, I think I can quickly share that. Uh, channel for the previous recording actually so you can look into those ones so I think they are mixed with different C sharp and Java so you need to cross check that and I think there's also okay there's also the group on page I'll send down across I think that's better it's more structure in yeah if yeah there's a group chat and yeah if you can get that across Okay, all right, let's go ahead. So I think we don't, I don't need to go into this. Yeah, okay. So for the last two sessions that we did for automation, we actually went through TDD, BDD, Gekin. We were able to set up SpecFlow with Selenium using Visual Studio, we did NUnit, we covered Specflow Basics and also with um, Feature Files. And we are also looking to the Gekin keywords and also step definitions. We are, we are also able to run the test using Chrome, IE, I think Firefox, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think we, we did with um, Safari because I don't have Safari on my system. So yeah, so this is what we've covered during the last two sessions. So if you missed that, I think you should look into that video and to brush up. In the next two sessions, we're going to go into the web driver commands, which is how to use your web driver, how to do the navigations, and also web element commands and also how to find element radio box and everything so and in the sixth one we seek in the five to six lessons we're going to look at the locator and s path so we might use css locator and uh, different ways to actually find your elements so we're going to look into that these two lesson three and four and five and six we might actually Look, look at them together. So then we move towards you know, switches and alerts. 
how to switch between windows then we talk about the page object but i think lessons 9 to 10 will come we talk about 9 to 10 even before uh we we'll get there actually because in when we are discussing one to two in setup we already started the page objects and everything so and um, we try to cover everything and things might move in different we might move them across and everything but we will try to cover everything that has been highlighted and that's everything there is for you to learn in uh, at least for this particular course so and um, yeah so any question before I continue doing to this one? And so introduction, fundamentals of testing, we went through that, what is testing, we, we did that also, what is testing, mistakes, errors, and defects, cost of defects, just so refresh your memory we also look into the roles of testing and software development principles of testing we went ahead to talk about fundamental test process waterfall v module iterative method scrum we talk about scrum who are the people in the scrum then test levels, we also mentioned about test level, unit test, integration test, system test, acceptance test. Also, we go ahead with test types and we mentioned about functional test, non-functional test, and yeah, we also talk about confirmation and regression. Then test design, also we went through test design and also test cases, test analysis, test implementation. Is that okay? I think it's is matter. We also yeah went through the test design techniques, test base approach, structure based approach. We also focus on experience based and yeah, how to apply different category of the technique. So and also yeah, this is very very important. The test techniques is very very important. I also say so if you're going for an interview you need to actually read them. It's very very important. Equivalent partitioning. We went through that with the samples. There's video for this, so please look at the YouTube channel. So, so the boundary value analysis we went through this with the samples also check out the video for that equivalent partitioning and how to use both of them together with boundary value analysis test management we also went through that who is a test manager who is a test analyst and yeah we also went through test planning test plan what do you put in your test plan we did a quick demo on Trello which is a uh, agile management tool that you could use so also look up for the video then we went to now introduction to selenium and specflow we yeah how to set up your spec um, visual studio what you need to do how to add visual studio to your how to add specflow to your visual studio so how to create a new project and the proposed design architecture that I suggested how to do that so and we went through this architecture to see what you need to do different folders that you need to create and how to add nuggets packages then what are the other packages that are required and add to add them. So we went through those ones also. Yeah, so setting up Trace Framework, I think, yeah, those, yeah. So yeah, those are the different packages that you need. 
also we went through oops what are oops um, before feature before scenario after feature and after scenarios how to do them so we went through those inspecting elements i think we're going to do that we've not actually done that so create groups okay all right so so that is that what we cover in a nutshell, in a nutshell. so if there's any question Okay, that is it for today. So we're going to go with the code that we've generated is now pushed to this particular repository. So on GitHub, for you to clone, you just click on here and you can clone think you can do something like okay quickly maybe I'll just do something so you need two different things uh, you can Google for okay one minute let's just say this is kind of very quick intro to git Google for git windows Open that. Okay. Okay. Then download that one, which I have already done. So that should open that for you. Then just click next, next. That should be able to install. Yeah, just click next, next, and then finish. That's fine. So, what that allows you to do is if you go open, yeah, let's say that. Okay, if you open a location, you can right click on that location and say git bash or git. GUI. So normally I use the git bash, which is this one. So I can do something like that now and say git bash. That brings that. Then you can so say git status to check the status of your code and think everything is fine on track. So I can say git add to add anything I want to add. So permission is denied. Okay, maybe to find index on that. So that's fine. No problem. That's okay. So so after you added the next, what you need to do is git commit. So you can use AM or AM and put the name what you want. This is my second commit. Then after that, you now say git push. So those are the three commands that you want. One is add, the second one is commit, and the last one is, so first one add, or you can say add dot, dot a, or slash a, um, dash a, or add dot. Then after that, you go to git commit, git commit am, and you can, you put, the comments in there and you present that then after that you, you just push so oh 
okay I don't I'm not sure that I can increase that okay okay hope that is better okay so that is one way I'll show you another way right now so another way is to um, Google for GitHub GitHub desktop so that also is you can install that if you install that one that gives you GitHub desktop which is similar to, like this one I don't normally use this to be honest so I use the git bash and also that is one way also you could as well say git DUI there are different ways to to do this anyway so that brings this to you instead of using the git uh, what's it called bash you can use the git GUI if you don't want to use the bash uh, the git bash as you can see this is saying as I've got some on, on stage changes I can decide to either Yeah, you can depending on what you find fancy, you can use anyone. Yeah, you can use any anyone. So I, I will try to see if we have a session we can look into Git later, but in this particular training we're going to be pushing everything to Git so so that we can learn from there. Okay, cool. Mm, now let's go ahead so this is our test we got our test uh, login so the next one I want to see is the page object now so because I'll go quickly on what we've done so the first thing we create our login feature then after I created our login feature, we created our step definition for the login that as you can see that is there. Then we now need to create our page object. So page object for which site. So let's say we use a site. One site, let's say gift. Okay, so first thing that we need to do, okay, all right, so, okay, before we start, I think we, let's take five minutes break, and then when we come back, we'll start from this, so uh, by 8 or, yeah, 9.05, then we start with the page object, okay, I'll just pause the video. Okay, let's say we are now about to automate the login functionality of this particular page. So for the manual process, you click on the login. And then you type your email address. And you type your password. And you click on secure signing. 
So that's what you want to do. Then you cannot confirm whether you see this particular error message if you are not able to log in or when you are able to log in, then it goes to successfully log in, logged in. So that's what we want to confirm today. And for you to do that, you need to inspect your element. If you go back to the home page. Because you're going to click on the login, you need to know what ele that element is. You need to right click and say inspect element. As you can see, this is this element that we want to click on, and that is that element. There are different ways to do this. One, you need to look at that element. It's got an upper link, that is the A, and it's got the login as the text. You can right click and say copy, and you have different way that you can do that. By SPath, by CSS selector, and you can do by ID different ways. So let's now go into our page objects right now and I'll show you what you need to do. Let's go to today. Right click to create the page object, add new. Going to, it's going to be a class that I want to create. So we're going to say login page. Black square is blocking the screen. Sorry, I don't know what that is to be honest. So. Okay, this is our one minute. Okay, one minute, so I should go back. Um, okay. okay, so what I did was creating the page object. You right click and you click on add and you click on new items. So I think you can also do class, but let's say new items, that's what I did. And then it's a class that you want to create and you put the name of, of the class here as page object. That's it. That was the step I, I took. Okay. So I'm not profile. All right, so from here right now, we need to, this is an approach that is basically very new. I'm going to go through this, then later we do the traditional find elements, but I think this is very, very simple to understand. So now we need to find our element. You open your brackets and you write find by okay i will stop there right and you can see there is a red line which is something is wrong and because something is wrong you need to fix that but let's continue and then i'll show you how to fix that how Yes, we got to. Okay. Okay. Hold on. I 
think let's let's try to fix this first so this is complaining about that because there's there's a package that is missing so let's try to add that nugget package add nugget package which is the page of just nugget package so go to okay I'll do that again so we want to add the page of just nugget package so right click on the solution and you click on nugget package for solution then you go to browse and let's search pitch object let's see if it's going to come up okay. can everyone meet their mic please on Selenium support. So install Selenium support and install that. Okay. So now let's go if you see that click on yes. Let me close that one. Okay, cool. Now you can see that is out now. So that's why I'm, I was looking for the page object. But actually, it's on that uh, no support. So if you are having that issue, you just need to click on uh, right click on your solution, click on man manage nuget packages for solutions, and go to browse and search for Selenium support and add Selenium support to your project. So that, that should solve the issue. So now what you need to do is click on the IntelliSense and then using that. So you could as well just type what you want to type at the top and that should be fine. So as you can see, it, now we can continue what we are typing. So you type finds by how is equal to how dot so these are different ways that you can actually find your element so we're going to go through each one of them today and you can find them by class name css you can find or if you have a custom selector you can find them by id you can find them by link text you can find them by name or partial link text or tag or XPath. So I'm going to look into each one of them so we're going to see how to use them. So the first thing, let's look at the DOM. So we want to click on the login URL, this particular login button. We want to click on it. But for us to click on it, we need to inspect that login button. We're going to see what exactly is that properties that we have. You right click and you can say inspect. That brings this particular window for you. So 
you should be on element if you are not on element on tab you click on element then it takes you to that particular element that you are going to so then you can right click and copy i will first start with select you know, selector because it's easy to copy that right now i'll just say copy selector then if i copy i copy my selector i just want to see what that is whoa that is not great so it's got long you should not use anything that starts from the body so i think i will i will look into yeah i'll teach you what you need to do about this later so but well, let's go back and see what else we can actually use so looking at that we said okay we've seen that okay we cannot use our css selector because it's so long but we can manipulate it later but i don't want to do that so uh, let's try sbuff also you can copy sbuff and see what that returns for us paste it that also yeah okay let me not part. Yeah, so this is what is called absolute expert. Absolute expert. Don't use that. It's not a good decision to use absolute expert because absolute expert starts from your HTML and then goes down. Right. You should use what is called relative expert. So let's look into why that is absolute. Because what that does is it goes into A, which is that one, the A tag. And let me reduce that. So it's try to map your journey from there. A, that is that one. Then four L, the fourth L L I. That is one, two, three, four. That's it. Then also after that it goes to UL, which is this one. Then after that the third div. So basically it's gonna be three divs here. One, two, three. The third one. That's what it's gonna be. And there's another div at the top, which is that one. So then also there's another div at after that. That is that. Then there's nav. The fourth now, that's what he's, he's looking for, that one. And also, the second div, which is after the nav, there's one div and there's another div. We need the second one. So then after that is body. After the first and the second div, then the body. So then after that is the HTML. So, but that journey is too long, so you should not have, you should not use absolute as part as well as as part start from the html tag so you should not use that you should use a relative so what's going to happen is we are not going to use as part we've seen that as part is not also a good decision in this particular case which other decision which other uh, selector do we have that we can use let's go to the code if you put dot you can see it's got okay Class name. Let's see. Has it got any class name? That's a question. Okay. The question is: Is it best to use an ID? Yes, it is best to use an ID. But not all elements will have an ID. As you can see, this hasn't got an ID at all. So you cannot you cannot use an ID. So I think you need to actually look into the DOM and see what is the best one to use so it's not like oh this is going to be the rule of thumb that if it's an id and uh, yeah i just need but if you have an id there yes it is advisable to use the id but if you don't have an id then you need to look into that particular element and see what you can use from there so let's go in there and see what our options are dot class name can we actually use class name let's go this particular yeah element has not got any class at all so we cannot use class name on that so let's go to the next one css we've tried css it was long and we've seen there's no id link text yes is a link so actually we can use a link text that is that we can put that there 
we can use a link text. Then follow by comma. Then after that, you say using is equal to. So now, what is that link text that we want to use? So you go to that DOM, which is this is a link, and that you can see the login is a link. So when you click on the login, it takes you to the login page. So that is a link text that we want. So I'll copy that, and we can put that in the bracket. No. Yeah. So basically, this is for people that are familiar with find element. So what you are doing here is like find element by dot link text. So, okay, with, of course, go your driver dots. So, this is the same thing as writing that, but we've not actually finished, so we need to use, we need to now put the element that, the name of that particular element. We can now say I web element. So, we need to add the Selenium web driver. So then, what is our login? Okay, I think that is missing. So we need to close that one. Okay, that's fine. So now we got our login button already here. So the next point is now for us to click on that login. So you need to create a, uh, a method void. It's going to return nothing. And we call it click login. So that is the method to click on login. Then what do we do? We call that login and we say dot click. That's that. So let's try to make that public. Okay. So that is that. To be honest, so if you're using find element, this is what you would do, what, that's what you write. But if you're going to use this new method, which I think it makes it more tidy, so, and this is what you're going to write, basically. So, I want to find an element, how am I finding that element? I'm finding, so, I think the last guy's uh, lesson I taught, I actually say, okay, basically, this is easy to understand, because if you say, Mr. Driver, yes, please find an element for me. Okay, Mr. Driver will ask you which element. Oh, please find this element by link text and the text is login. That's what you are telling the driver. So the driver is going to go and find that element for you, which is got login as a link text. So basically that's what you are saying. The same way also you say finds by how do you want me to find it? I want to find it by link text. What am I finding? I'm finding login. And then when you find it, you save it into this particular variable, which is a web element. And that variable is what you are going to be using henceforth. So you go and you create a method. You call that method click login. And inside that method, you you will now actually click on that element. What if you have another method, another button called login on the page? So if, for instance, let's say we have another, uh, 
let's say there is login a good example will be mm, let's say Okay. That, okay. There's no. Okay. I'll just go. There's a question that says, "What if? What if we have another login? Another? Yeah. So, if you have another element on a page that is called login, two things that you could do. One, if that element is got the same link, then you have an issue. The same name as a link. Maybe it's a link text." and that element is login. Then if you do this, what's going to happen? It's going to find the first one and it's going to click on it. So it's going to click on it. So what that means is like, for instance, if there's another, um, let's say, let's go here and let's assume that, that. Okay, let's say we have these two like that. I just changed the DOM anyway. Let's say we have these two. And then what happens is if you use this particular code, it's going to find the first one and click on it. That's what it's going to do. But if you know that, oh, they are distinct, they don't go to the same place, and you want to be able to differentiate them, then link text is not the best approach for you. So you need to use another way that would distinct both of them. So maybe both of them might have a different ID, then you can use ID, or they have different class, or you need to use a CSS for them. So that's the best way to do. So you need you need to be proactive and also look into the DOM and see what you can do. For for instance, right now, you can see this is got login and this is also got login. So you cannot use um, link test for them, but you can use other ways. So let's say this is now got uh, let me try to edit that ID is equal to register. So, and this is go. ID is equal to a login. So, like, if they go ID right now, you can, instead of using the uh, what's it called? Instead of using the link text, you can decide to use the ID. So what you're going to do is, I'll create another one. Let's say, let's say we are doing for registration now, which is like the register button. For the register button, let's see what that brings. The register and the ID is register. Maybe we just put that and register of login. So we just use the ID as register. Dot. So then that is going to be So you need, you need to have a way to identify your elements uniquely on the page. If they are not unique on the page, then they are going to be returning the same. Uh, yeah, it's going to take the first one. So another way to actually check that is if you do Control F, yeah, and you put your CSS, let's say. Let's say you are using CSS. For instance, if you right click on this now and say copy CSS and you paste it. As you can see now, because we are using ID now, so the CSS that we get is now kind of reduced. It's different from what we got right now. This is and the same way also if you copy and you copy the S path. Also, the S path also will be different. Let's see. So that's the S part. So this is what I called 
uh, relative s path because the s path now is not relative to the id it's not longer it's no longer relative to the html which is absolute so for instance if i remove the id at this top Yes, uh, uh, I did. Okay, so I think the issue is this. So let me remove that one. Okay, so if I update the ID, let's say I don't, I don't have the ID because it's possible, yeah, as you can see before, I didn't have ID. So if I say copy S path now, it copies say it copies like absolute one so that's absolute you should not use absolute at all but also it's possible that your id maybe developers put an id at this level let's say there's, there's some id id is equal to let's start let's say banner. So if there's an ID here, so if you now come here and say copy S path, it's going to copy the relative S path for you. As you can see, this is still relative because it's going to the top and getting the the one that's got an ID and beat your S path from there. You should never beat your S path from the HTML. It's, it's not best practice. I've seen people doing that, but it's not best practice. You shouldn't do that. So if that's okay, we go back to our code. What we've done, I think this is not, yeah, this is not right because I've just do this as an, as an example, so I'm going to remove it. So from the code, we have our link text and it's logging. So, and that is that. I don't need this. This is just an example, so you don't, you don't need to put that so I can remove it. Okay, I can leave it for reference purpose. So, okay, now we've done our page object. The next step is now for us to link our page object to our step definition. So, because what you need to do is just call this particular uh, method in your step definition. What you need to do is go to where you say click on login link. Yeah when I click on the login link. That's what you want to do at this point. So, and then you, so you want to now call this particular method. For you to do that, you need to first instantiate the login page. So this is how you need, what you need to do. First thing I will do is create a constructor The constructor, a constructor is a method that's got the name of the class. The constructor is a method that has got its name as the name of the class. So you say public so it's going to be a method. It's not going to return anything. So that is a constructor. I'm going to instantiate that particular class that has got the login inside but before i do that i need to bring the class so the name of the class that i'm going to use is login page so i'm going to bring that class here so i'm going to call that class login page but with a lowercase l i'm going to create that instance of that so that's what so my login yeah in most cases if you want to do that you can also do that if you want to do that so that's fine but let's just use the login page as in with lowercase l so that is the instance of the login page that we have but now it's showing underline is underlined red what we need to do is to now bring the use the page objects 
no, done. Let's see. So yeah, you should you should use that namespace because you want to bring the login page. So let's go back. So yeah. So that you should need to use that. So using training age page object because that is in namespace where this is that's the namespace where this particular class is stored. So because it's like basically I'll just quickly explain that. Uh, where's the okay. The login page is stored in this particular class. Let's say there are kind of children on for a mother, but for you to be able to use the login page in this step, you need to be able to you need to bring that particular namespace inside this one because you can actually you cannot see them. So that's where you need to use the using to be able to use them. So you need to bring this particular login page inside this so that you can actually have visibility to that particular page. So that's in the layman language what we are actually doing. So now for you to be able to use that, you need to say using training eight page object because that's the namespace for the login page that we've created. So now the next one is for you to now instantiate instantiate it. So is equal to a new login page. So instantiate the new login page. That is that. Then you can now do what you need to do. Login page dot click on. Yeah. So that's what you need to do. As you can see, even when I say login page dot that. So the login click login appears because it's already now instantiated that particular uh, login page that we did. So let's quickly look at what could go wrong. What could go wrong? What could go wrong is this. You do this, right? It will still be fine because you've got an instance already declared at the top. So that is fine. But when you run your code, it's going to say, uh, we're going to, maybe we'll run it and we'll see the issue. It's going to say no, I think something like no object or something like that because you've not actually instantiated your, your object. So that is one thing that could go wrong. Another thing that you might forget is to instantiate that, but that would actually try an error for you. So instantly you will know that, yeah, I haven't instantiated it at all. So then another issue is for you to put that in here. So that is fine because that is okay here, but because this is a method, and the visibility of this particular uh, uh, object is no longer visible to other method outside it. So because of that, you need to bring this one out of the method. So and you bring it out so that other particular other method can see that particular class that you just instantiated. So that is that. So. That's what you need to do. The same way also we would do for other page objects that we want to do. Let's go to our step definition, or, or, sorry, on our feature files quickly before we go. So on our feature file, we go giving a navigate to the site. Let's see what we need to do for that one. Giving a navigate to the site. What we need to do, you need to click on, we need to go to navigation. So and that is basically easy. What we've done, we've got our driver in in the hook. So we need to bring our driver. So because then we can do the navigation using our driver. So we come, the first thing we want to do the navigation. So normally you will say driver dot 
navigation but you can do that okay sorry java dot because there's no instance of that driver so what you could do is you bring you extend hook because from the hook we can you can bring that in you can bring this driver in from the hook so you can extend your hook class so to do that you can say hook so we extend that so once that is extended hold on. so it said it cannot be saved so we go and remove the you don't need to be stay okay so it's been extended so now because it's been extended you can go to your login where is the feature file oh sorry I think I supposed to extend this also uh, normally this is where I start from so I need to extend hook because my driver is in in that class hooks driver so for me to use the driver I need to extend the, this particular class so to do that I will need to do that so so now if I do driver dot so I can see everything is there now I can refer to the driver so then this is everything that you can do on the driver but we're going to go through the one that we is relevant to us as we go along in the course of this training but now we just want to go to navigate so I'm looking for the navigate one so navigate so then go to URL let's see HTTP. Okay, it said the hook is inaccessible due to its protection level. So let's see what the hook is called. Okay, so public static. I think that should be also public. They also do that. Even that, that I, will, I will talk about that later. So, what is public? Registration. Okay, so the code is going to be available for you to use anyway. So what I've just done, right, the first thing I did was extend my hook driver, which we've done. So inside the hooks is where I've got all my driver, and I've just made them public so that I can be able to use them in a, in a different place. So then... I have extended the driver. What's that? Registration. So I just extended it. Then I can use the driver. So for me to navigate to that particular site, I just need to do that. 
let me just do that so driver dot navigate dot go to url so whichever site you want to navigate to you can put them in that particular um, code in the code then after that let's go to our login page again so you want to click on the login so let's go to that one so we've done that now so from our login page what we did was create an instance of the login page from our page objects because we need an element to click on so because we need an element to click on then we've created the instance of that then we call that particular instance uh, we put dot so it now displayed every method that is already we've already written which however we only got one so we can call that particular method so that will go for you to know you can click on the login page and click on f5 f12 rather so that should take you to that particular uh, method so that is going to be implemented or you know, executed once you go in there then the login page is going to be clicked then let's go back to our feature file the next one is enter you know, username so we're going to do the same thing for the username however so it means that once this is clicked now so you need to have your username so quickly i'll just go through that again also inspect my elements so in my element i can see you can see i've got class I can use class, I can use ID this time around. So let's try, let's use the ID this time around. We go to our login page. We're going to do the same thing. So I'll just copy that. So make it faster. But this one is going to be username. But by ID, that's what I want. But what is the ID for that particular one? So it's email. Okay, it's not even username, it's email. So let me change that. So that's email and using email. Same thing also for password, I think. So if you right click, inspect, and the password also has got that but let's assume that we are not using the password we can use class because this is called class also let's use class for that so but also know that if you're using class the class name that you're using should be unique otherwise it's going to just search for the first one password So, and then we click on that also. So for this one, you have, you have the class as that, and you have, yeah, so on that. So let's try to see if you can use CSS for this, copy CSS. okay all right cool so let's use the css for that one for the login for the sign in, sign in. so let's say that is sign in so and this is the css that we copied that goes inside that one and we can see is dot css selector Okay, all right, cool. So quickly for the next few meetings. So the next thing that we need to do now, we need to look into each one of this one. So what do you want to do now? You want to type into the username or into the email rather. You want to type into the e email. So we create a, a, a method for that public void. So 
type username or email address email so we know that when we want to type something we need to know what we are typing so we pass a string and we can say what is the email that we want to type so now open that for you to type anything you need to use what is called send keys so we're going to go through that next week and we'll look into what we've done so we say email dot so what do you want to do you want to send the keys to email so where's that Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I think that is the issue. So, as you can see now, I've got emails, emails. So it's confused. I was, I wanted to refer to this, but that is got email. So what I'm going to do is like I'm going to say instead of saying email, I say text because I can say text email. So uh, email element. So. Let's say Anna call me and say email element dot. So what I'm going to do is I want to do send keys. Send keys. So it should be down. Send keys. So what am I sending? I'm sending this text. So that is that. So what this is going to do is that okay, it's going to say oh this is my text which is this my element rather which is for, uh, I actually found it by ID and it's email so please go and find that for me driver and then when you find that send this anything that I pass as text email into it so the same way also that we did for this this one we're going to go into our feature file so you want to send emails so now we're going to say login page dot so yeah type email okay all right so now i think i will just retrace that what i did before maybe this is not the right time to go through that so what i've done before because with the intention that we're going to pass a parameter to it. So for what is that? Okay. So here yeah, we are passing a parameter, but maybe we'll do that one later. It's not yet time. So what's going to happen? What let's put the parameter directly here. So what's the what do you want to enter? You want to put my email as a test out test.com so then if you now go to the step definition we don't need any parameter so it's not so we just need login dot login page dot type email and that's it so if we go back we do the same thing also for the other ones the password so we've find our we've already found our password now we need to create a method for the password also public so void then let's say type password so then what is our password this is the password so the okay just to make it a split password element so dot send keys which key am i sending my password so that's my password and that's it so this will type the password and this will enter that so if you then the next one you go to your feature file enter password then you call that particular method the same way login page dot so type password and open and close bracket 
So what else? We want to also click on login button. That is this step. So we go to our login page also. So we want to public void click sign in so once you click on that so you just need to copy that and then dot click that's all So as you understand the sequence now, or if you know what I'm going to do, the next thing is for me to go to my feature file, then go to where that step definition is, then remove this, and then call my login page, then bring the click on sign in, and that's it. Then the next one, I see what is the next one. Then I'm logging. I'll leave this until next week. I'm going to comment that out. To comment, you just put the hash sign, and that's now commented out. So it's no longer, it's not going to be executed. So basically, that's all our tests written for the login page. So what you need to do is to run it, just right click, and you run it. So, and that is it. So we've not actually in, uh, initialized the element for the page object. So I'm expecting that to, to fail because of the initialization of the page object. So I'll, I'll look into that right now. It's taken to long to. Any question why we're waiting for that to any question? Any question? Okay, cool. So now let's try to debug what the problem is, which I think some of them. Okay. I could not find existing directory for the path. Okay. Okay. So the issue is with IE. So oh, I think we are actually using the driver for this one anyway. So let's remove this one. So so we are actually using the the Chrome driver anyway so but we look into that one I think is something that we need to resolve later so let's run it Okay, that's a Chrome driver. Oh, really? Okay, cool. Let's go to the page. She expects you to click on the login. So I think it's already failed. Oh, not yet. I send all the missions. Okay, there's a question I wanted to answer. Okay, yeah, it's not right. 
Okay, so that field also, yeah, that field I think I, I like I said, you need to instantiate that. So this is the issue. Sometimes I deliberately leave this in so that you can see when you get this issue like this, it's because your page object has not been instantiated. So you need to instantiate your page object. On your, what you need to do is you create a, There are different ways to do this, but the best way I do is I'll just create a, what's it called? I'll create a constructor. Public. So, for inside this constructor, I will call the page factory dot init element and I put driver so that driver so that is from the oops. so I'll stand the driver so I don't need to yeah so that is the so that is what I will do for my page objects if I create another page object, I will need to do the same thing. So let's continue and let's run it again. Okay, that's fine. I think this is cannot locate the object, isn't it? So So let's debug that one. So we stop here anyway. So next week we start from here. So and we should be able to yeah get this working by next week. And yeah, I would post the uh post yeah. I'll push that particular code in there so you can actually clone it. So then also test it from your end. So, and before we leave, we'll try to maximize the screen. So, let's start running. I think that should be it. so let's see what happens on on this one so I will upload I'll upload the video also so and you can go through it with that then I would also yeah commit what we've done so like I said 
the way to do the git uh, let's check the status so you can see everything that we've modified so then I'm going to add it but I think it was complaining about the permission so I'm not sure oh okay yeah adding Yeah, permission field. Yeah, I think. No, I think that has been locked. Okay, that's no problem. Well. So if we go here, see what we have. So what's that? I think we created a page object. Okay, let's push it. I think there should be a page object there. Push now. Yeah, I'll check the what's the permission about. So I think that that is us for today. So yeah, so it changes this yeah anyway.